greetings survivors this is hell's janitor thank you so much for stopping by the channel today and in today's video we are going to be discussing the first five things you should do as a new player in a new save when starting playing seven days to die so with that in mind let's get started Point number one is to complete your basic quests as quickly as you possibly can. These you'll find here on this quest tab here. Basic survival. Gather plant fibers, craft bedroll, place a bedroll. You'll have eight of these to do. And as you go into your crafting menu each time, the one that you need to do next will be highlighted for you. Get them done as soon as, po as, soon as you possibly can. Don't stray too far from where you spawn in. Gather all your plant fibers just by punching all your um all your grass pick up your small stones either by picking them up either by pressing e to pick them up um or apparently punching them um also does the job um one other thing you can do whilst you're doing this is you can um fibers and and whatnot to make cloth fragments for bandages i wouldn't worry too much about the chrysanthemums um, or the um, the golden rod that you see lying around, but basically get these done as soon as possible. Okay, so next up. Oh, we need to gather wood, but we haven't found any woody fibers. Now you can gather wood by punching trees. Let's go with some more cotton plants, pick up as many small stones as we can. Um, what we're looking for, ah, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for these little woody fibers here. There's one. There's two. There we go. We craft our stone axe. So you go through all eight of these and you get these done as quickly as you possibly can. Okay, bonus points for this one as well for this for this first task. When you're chopping down trees, you'll notice that in your toolbar down here, you'll get seeds for the tree that you chop down um, you don't need to hang on to it um, you can't sell them at the trader and all they do is they take up space in your inventory um, so replant them as soon as you get them um, they'll um, they'll regrow um, within a day or two um, so it just yeah it just it it, it it saves you inventory space it just saves you lugging around a load of seeds in the early game um, when it comes to being when, when it comes to your encumbrance penalty you're going to find that um the less you carry in the early game the better um also when it comes to gathering small stones i mean feel free to continually pick them up off the floor um but if you happen to see any boulders lying around like i can see one just over there you can use your stone axe you don't have to run around picking up loose stones off the floor. You can use your stone axe to chop up the bigger stones, which will give you more stones. The, I mean, the, the, the first ones that you find, um, you'll want to pick up off the floor. Um, but after that, you don't have to worry about picking them up. Just use your stone axe, chop up the big boulders um, to get um, an abundance of small stones, which will they'll, they'll tide you over for a while. Okay, step number two, your skill points. Now, this is highly subjective, might be somewhat controversial. It's entirely up to you. However, these are my recommendations for where you put your first four skill points to give you more of a chance of survival. One point in sexual Tyrannosaurus, because you reduce your melee and tool stamina usage by 8% and power attacks by 15. And stamina in the early game is everything. 
um, because you won't have any ranged weapons apart from the primitive bow, which is not very good. It's unlikely you're going to find a, 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 a pistol or a shotgun or any other sort of firearm early on. So running away from zombies and then turning back to fight them or fighting off zombies and then trying to run away, stamina is absolutely crucial. So with that in mind, we go one in sexual Tyrannosaurus. We also go one in rule one cardio, so you can start regening stamina whilst you're sprinting. As I said, stamina is everything. So that's where we put the second one. Your third one I would recommend putting in here because it will unlock basic recipes such as bacon and eggs, boiled and grilled meats, baked potatoes, cornbreads and teas and coffees, which will give you a lot more scope for things that you'll be able to cook on either your campfire or the trader's campfire. Um, one of the first things you're also going to want to do is when you go out and do your first lot of quests, which we'll get to in a minute, um, is you will want to find a cooking pot. A cooking pot is absolutely essential. You're going to want a cooking pot for your campfire. A grill, not so much, but a cooking pot super important so yeah um one point your third point put it in master chef and your last point again it's entirely up to you um i generally go with healing factor um simply because you gain one health every 90 seconds with natural healing and that will go up as you as you increase these it just it i think it increases your survivability a little longer i mean there are others that are useful pain tolerance if you think you're going to get beaten up by zombies a lot living off the land if you're going to go harvesting crops you're going to be able to get um two items from wild or planted crops um iron gut if you think you're going to be able to find a lot of food um you will reduce food and water loss from physical exertion by using iron gut but generally as a rule i go for healing factor Okay, point number three. Once you have located your trader, you're inside your trader and the door is closed so no zombies can get to you because they cannot damage any of the trader bases at all. So it is a safe haven between the hours of 6 a.m. in the morning and 10 p.m. at night or about 6.10 in the morning and about 9.50 at night um, game time um, on the default settings. Um, but locate your trader, wherever he may be, and loot it. You never know what you might find. For example, right there, a forge schematic right off the bat, which means that we can read that directly from there. We don't have to put it, we don't have to take it. We can just use it by pressing A or clicking on use, and we can read it directly from where we picked it up. Same goes for over here. We have a destroyed chemistry station. We've only got four empty water jars in there, but cobblestone rocks in the destroyed cement mixer. Not the greatest trader to loot, this one not going to lie and we really did luck out in this particular one because not one of the crafting stations here is is functional in an ideal world and some traders are better than others for example if you find trader hugh who in navsgain is in the snow biome um is undoubtedly one of the best early traders to loot so before you go and speak to your trader after you know it's the final step of your first quest before you go and speak to him run around the entire place have a look see what loot is lying around there'll be trash bags there might be trash bags on the floor there might be trash cans um like i said trader hugh he's got a whole underground section where you can go down a well in the middle of it he's got places underground he's got places all around the edge of the the building he's got two two munitions boxes in that particular trader as well as well as a gun safe that you can actually pick with a lock pick um right from the start so yeah go around the whole place and loot everything that you can um the reason for that is, is when we actually go upstairs and we speak to the guy who is my favourite trader, Trader Joel. We have one more item here that we can loot, which is his bookcase. And there we have a weapon flashlight mod schematic. That sells for 160 Dukes. Now you have to decide early on whether or not the Dukes are more important to you or the ability to build, you know, to craft the item that the schematic pertains to is going to be more important to you. Um... Again, it's a 50-50 choice. It's entirely up to you. In this instance, I would be inclined to take it and sell it. Because there's probably going to be other opportunities later on in the game um, to obtain that schematic anyway. Um, if it was a Crucible schematic, I would absolutely say read it straight away. Because Crucibles are absolutely essential. So we found our trader. First thing we want to do is we want to see, see his in inventory. And here you can see all of the items every single item that he's got for sale 
Okay, that's in his general stash. Here's where you find the secret stash, okay, which goes back to the um, allocating skill points that we were talking about earlier. If you go into better barter, um, this is where the secret stash starts to get bigger and better and you start to get access to more more exclusive things. But the purpose of looting the trader when you first find him is to find out what you've got that he wants to buy. So, for example, we don't need air filter landmines in the early game. We can sell those. That's worth 109 dukes. We can sell 10 of our cloth fragments, which is another good reason for gathering up those cotton fibers early on and turning them into cloth fragments. They're worth a few more dukes too. Shotgun shells, we don't have a shotgun yet. So what do we need them for? We'll sell them. Food, generally, keep. Empty glass jars, we don't need them. We can sell them. Empty tin cans, we don't need them. We can sell them. He's not interested in any of the cobblestone rocks. And this schematic, we can also sell for 160 dukes. So right off the bat, we've got, we got ourselves 286 dukes. If he's got food for sale, like cans of, cans of food, whatever have you, if you're really desperate for food, it's a good place to buy them. But every trader that you come across will have a vending machine right here. And I would heartily recommend stocking up on some food fairly early on. Um, almost as much as you can afford. Yucca juice smoothies are great, but they're expensive. They will give you food and water. Um, red tea here gives you efficient digestion. Um, get a can of stock, can of tuna, whatever you want. We're going to buy the can of tuna. I wouldn't worry too much about candies at this point, um, but if you want to check the candies, um, check their description to find out exactly what they do. They all have the description on them of exactly what each different candy does. Okay, and point number four. Your early jobs that you want to take from your trader. What you want to do, what I recommend you do, if he has them, is buried supply quests. Now, he doesn't have any buried supply quests this time. So, again, as a rule, what I generally tend to do is we want to get one of these done early doors. Okay, we want to do it before it gets dark because we don't have... The only torch we have is the... Um, is the handheld flaming torch and you don't really want to be out in the dark trying to fight zombies off with a flaming torch is really not a good idea so we're going to take this job which is the closest one is 404 meters away and it's north which probably means it's the other side of the mountain range in nav's game but all of the others as you can see 1.1 kilometers 1.3 1.9 1.8 they're all a fair distance away so we're going to take this first job we're going to go to this cabin 05 which will be marked as a waypoint on your map right here So all we're going to do is we're going to run out and we're going to get these done as quickly as we possibly can. So in an ideal world, the first quests that you'll find from the trader um, will be buried supply quests. Buried supply quests are really good. A, they will give you um, a fair chunk of materials um, that you can use, namely clay soil which, believe it or not, um, you will accumulate fairly quickly, but is an absolutely integral ingre ingredient in a forge for almost everything you will ever want to craft out of a forge. So clay soil is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Whoops, we just went past the bird's nest there. Bird's nest, what we're looking for in bird's nest in an ideal world is not just feathers. And what we want to do here as well is we want to chop up our bird's nest so we get some more materials out of it. Collect all the birds' nests on, on the way. Anything else that you see that might be worth a little detour, you know, I'm not going to stop and chop up big stones or chop down trees or anything like that. I'm going to pick up any any small stones I see, chop up all the small wood that I see. I'm going to avoid as many zombies as I can. Um, absolutely no shame in that whatsoever. If you want to avoid zombies, um, to avoid getting hit, absolutely. I mean, in in the early game, the first seven days is the most brutal in this game it's the hardest part of the game to survive and the best way to survive in my experience and my opinion is to avoid combat and conflict with zombies wherever possible there is absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever if you get surrounded or if you're in a fight with a zombie that you don't think you can win there is absolutely nothing wrong with running away and living to fight another day but we're going to stop here. We're going to gather up some more of those cotton plants for the cotton fibers. Because the cotton fibers, as we've already established, some more small stones there. We want to gather up as many of those. 
um, in the early game, gathering small stones, keeping small stones, um, and plant fibers on you is um, is important for, for for making repairs on your weapons. Um, one more thing, as a little bonus, I would probably recommend you do right off the bat is you go to your um, tools and traps section, is build yourself a stone shovel, and go to your ammo and weapons, and build yourself a stone sledgehammer. The club is good. Don't get me wrong. The club is good. But I actually think that the sledgehammer is better. Now, the important thing to remember here is that we built we built and crafted our bedroll right in the um, right at right at the start of the game. Okay, we we put it we crafted it, we put it down, then we picked it up. If we die, we will randomly spawn anywhere on the map. Your bedroll is your respawn point. And what what I tend to do when I play this is I tend to is I tend to look for a place that I can actually make home in um, before I put the bed roll down, and especially before I put the land claim block down as well. Now we could have, we could have double looted this place, but time is of the essence. So we want to get through here. Now we we can't avoid this. We're going to have to deal with zombies. See, and we, all, we already got involved in a fight, and we've already been hit. But now what we want to do is we want to go through the entire the entire building, the entire POI, as it's called, which is a place of interest or a point of interest, and loot as much stuff as we can possibly carry. If it's not going to be of any use to us, at the very least, we'll be able to sell it. And this is where you're going to start getting the first items that you're going to want and that you're going to need um, to um, to increase your chances of survival. Be on the lookout for things like this. You saw the little um, the little cracks where the um, where the thing didn't fit properly. You know there was a, there was like a it it, it wasn't a, a sealed thing. Always be on the lookout for things like that in the walls and in um, um, in in forges, um, fake air vent covers that that look crooked um always be on the lookout for those because there is nearly always loot hidden behind that watch out for these things as well watch out for closets monster closets almost always have zombies in them oh i thought that was going to kill him but it didn't all right we are now down to what have we got in the laundry basket? Sewing kit. We're going to make use of that for sure. Cloth fragments. We can sell those. Or we can make bandages with them if we're going to be bleeding. And before we start looting too much, check behind your pictures. You never know what you might find. There might be a little cubby hole behind there. And look at that. We've got a torch and another, bo another bottle of water. And we've got some glue. We've got some cowboy boots. We can wear those. Glue. Super important. Glue. Is one of it's an integral ingredient in duct tape, which is one of the most useful, useful items in the entire game. Um, acid, we we'll take it for now. Right, you see this? See how this doesn't quite fit properly? If you look behind there very closely, let's just keep an eye on that zombie, make sure it doesn't come in. If you look behind there very closely, you can see that. Sometimes it will give you something that you want. Sometimes it will give you some good loot. Sometimes it won't. Um, check ovens and kitchens particularly again what we were talking about earlier oh that's a reinforced door I'm not going to bother I'm going to leave that I'm going to leave that guy out there for now there we go we've got some more drink in that particular container what have we got in the filing cabinet we've got some paper and a book we can whoa we've got a zombie oh we've got more than one zombie oh boy oh boy oh boy we're in trouble we're in trouble okay this is another tip okay use doors to your advantage Zombies have to break down doors. So you can open a door, take a swing, shut the door. Give you a chance to regen some stamina or reload a weapon. Open the door, take a swing, and lock and shut the door again if you feel you need to. Oh, how did that hit me? She didn't even swing at me. Oof. That was rough. Luckily, medicine cabinet, we found a bandage, and we found some painkillers. Painkillers, so useful. So useful. Toilets, almost always, there's almost always murky water in toilets. Occasionally you might get lucky and you might find yourself a pistol or a, or a dagger. 
But yeah, check absol absolutely everywhere. Now, if you're using power attacks like I am there, that um, sexual Tyrannosaurus perk that we used earlier, so important. So you don't use up all your stamina. Oh, I can hear the hissing. That means there's going to be more zombies around. Here we have the loot room. Do we have any zombies in here? Are they going to drop out of the roof? Yes, they are. Check all your corners. Check your roofs. Check everything. Give that guy a smack in the face. Give that guy another smack in the face. We're going to shut the door behind us. Oh, no, we've got another one in the roof. That We probably shouldn't have shut the door then. We can always run out and... Oh, she hit me again without hitting me. Oh, I don't like that. Right, nothing nothing this time behind there. Oh, and we found a false floor. I can hear another zombie somewhere. We want to avoid him. We want to stay away. Oh, he's outside. Nuts. We want to hit and not get hit. That's what we want to do. Hit and not get hit. There we go. Knock them all out. Right, that is obviously where the false floor is. We want to avoid that. Okay, we got some ammo. We got some, we got another, and now we've got some armor. That should help with our survivability a little bit. Um, recommended that you wear this stuff right off the bat. Uh, we've got a tier two stone sledge, which will replace the tier one that we made. And how lucky is that? That is one of the most useful things that we could have found in this first quest is a helmet light mod. We're going to take, we're going to hold, press R and we're going to pick up all the loot. Now, the helmet light mod, as we found, a, we found an, an armored helmet, which is great. Now we can modify this with this mod. And then by pressing F, we've got a, we've got a torch light. A helmet like that is an absolutely amazing find. For our first quest. Absolutely amazing. We're going to go through all the loot here. See what we got. We've got a lot of stone axes. Well, we can replace our tier one and scrap it. These have no sell price. We can scrap those directly from the box. Scrap them back for the raw materials. Check the rest of the room. Make sure there's nothing else hidden in here. It doesn't look like there is. It looks like they're just curtains hiding boarded up windows. So now our next priority as we've gone through and we've checked the whole place the next thing we want to do is we need to get we need to find the thing that we came here for which is the courier supplies I very nearly left without picking up the courier supplies now there's no obvious way to get up onto the roof there there is no obvious way there's, there's no ladders or anything like that. What we're going to have to do is we are going to have to do what's referred to in the Seven Days to Die community and among gamers in general as we're going to have to do something called a nerd pole. So what we do is we put down a block and then we jump and put down another block. But we probably shouldn't have put it there because we can't jump up any further. We want to make sure that there's an open gap above us so we can actually jump and do it there we go we pick up our courier satchel which was the purpose of it i always drag that down into the bottom left hand corner up in the top right corner there you can see return to trader um, we've got another zombie outside that is that's unfortunate something that we could really 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 done without i'm not entirely sure how we got up there but we're going to take care of him because i don't i don't really want it all look see how see that see how we were out of stamina that's why that sexual Tyrannosaurus thing is so important. Whew. Okay, right. It is now 25 past 7. Game time. Did we? we this is That's where we came in, wasn't it? Yeah, we did. We checked all the way down there. Right, all we're going to do now is we're going to leg it back to the trader as fast as we possibly can. And hopefully... Hopefully we can outrun some zombies unless you've um unless you're a um unless you're a sadist or a diehard seven days to die player and you've set the game to um insane difficulty and nightmare speed zombies, you're not gonna be able to do an awful lot of running. Because the zombies will be super, super, super quick. Ooh, feathers and eggs. That's what we want. We can take a little break there. 
we can take a little break we'll take a little breather regen some stamina in fact another good way to regen some stamina whilst we're doing this is to drink that coffee that we had that will give us a stamina regen boost so whilst we're sprinting which we're not going to be sprinting very quickly because we're encumbered we're carrying more stuff than our backpack will hold but it will stop us from losing quite so much stamina whilst we're running and this is where we can start either keeping this stuff or selling this stuff now again it depends in, it's entirely up to you what rewards you want to take i'm not going to go into details of what you should or shouldn't take um but you can you you, you can take whatever quest rewards you want and the other thing we can do now is we can sell half of the stuff that we looted from that previous quest i'm not even sure if the trader will he doesn't buy gasoline. Um, he can take the empty glass jars because we got a, we got a good stack of water out of that last one. Um, we still don't, we don't have a shotgun, so we don't really need the shotgun ammo. But I would say probably one of the first probably one of the first weapons we're going to find is going to be a blunderbuss, and we're going to want that blunderbuss ammo. I would say on day one and on night one, the chances of us finding a shotgun or a gun that requires 9mm ammo is very, very small. So we're going to sell that so we can get a decent stack of Dukes. And then we can go through his ammo and weapons to see whether or not he's got anything that we can use. Now, he had a hunting rifle, which would have used the 7.62 ammo, but it's a lot of coins. And that is the only firearm that the guy has got for sale. Don't really want to spend 400 dukes on an iron crossbow. I'd rather take my chances with a sledgehammer, a bow, and a wooden club. So we'll hang on to those dukes for now. Uh, so that leads us very nicely on to tip number five. Set up a base as close to the trader as you possibly can. If you want to build a place right outside the trader... Um, that you can um, you can safely hide from zombies in then by all means do that if so you there have we have it guys those are the five things i recommend that all new players should do when they first start playing seven days to die um, if you disagree with me or you have any alternative strategies or um alternative things um things that you think i missed um important stuff let me know down in the comments below um also, if you would like to, um, if you would like to catch a live stream at some time, um, I have been streaming on Twitch lately. I also stream on Facebook Gaming as well. Links to both channels will be in the description down below. But in the meantime, guys, thank you very much for tuning in, and hopefully, I will see you guys in the next video.